Hi! In this section, you will learn algorithms relating to one of the most well-known and popular problems in real life, and of course, big data, clustering. The process of clustering is used in exploratory data mining and statistical analysis, and is applied in many fields including machine learning, image and pattern recognition, data retrieval, and many more. Clustering is the process of identifying subsets of objects from a population such that objects within the same group or cluster are more similar to each other than they are to other groups. The data from the population can take many different forms. If the data is completely distinguishable, then it can easily be separated into clusters. However, it is not necessary to assign every data point to a cluster. Some of the population can be so significantly different from the rest that is considered an outlier. Outliers do not belong to any cluster. In clustering, the data can be considerably complex. In these cases, separating data into clusters is not always easy. Let's look at some examples. Imagine you have a huge amount of data which contains the medical records of cancer patients. These records would include information such as age, gender, and details about their cancer with n different variables. Using this data, you can define each patient as a vector in n dimensional space. If you then cluster this data, you would expect that patients with similar forms of cancer are within the same cluster in this space. Here, you should use cosine distance to determine the distances between vectors. Why would you want to cluster this data? Well, by doing so, you can use it to predict the likelihood of a newly admitted patient having cancer, and if so, which type of cancer they most likely have. This is possible by adding the medical data of the new patient into the existing population and seeing if it falls into a cluster or not. Clustering also has important applications in social networks. For example, one is finding possible suggestions for friends. A common approach to solve this problem is to suggest one node to another one if they have a mutual friend. However, if you wanted to increase the probability of finding old friends who haven't seen each other for a long time, it would be better to suggest nodes in the same cluster, like people who were in the same high school. If your old friend was in another class, this approach could find and suggest them to you, although it is important to consider the time complexity of different approaches, since the graph may change significantly during the time. An important thing in clustering is how to represent a cluster. In Euclidean space, it is possible to use the centroid of the data. The centroid is the average value of the data points within the cluster. When we are clustering articles or any data in non-Euclidean dimensions, then there is no average defined. In these cases, you can simply represent a cluster by choosing one of the points contained within it. This point is called the medoid. There are different ways to define the medoid, as the point with the minimum sum of distances to other points of the cluster, or the point which minimizes the maximum distance to another point of the cluster. However, clustering nodes of a graph is more different. Sometimes you need to represent a cluster by only one node. In this case, you should use the medoid. However, if you present the graph by a matrix, then it is not necessary to represent the cluster by nodes. A matrix could be the representation. In this section, you will learn two basic clustering approaches in graph. These algorithms are difficult to extend to social networks and big data, so I'll also describe another algorithm based on a matrix representation of the graph, which can be applied on large-scale data. I continue with hierarchical clustering, which starts with each point as a cluster. Once each point is defined as its own cluster, according to the measurement for its closeness, it combines the closest two clusters. It then continually repeats this process, combining the two closest clusters. Merging stops if the algorithm achieves the defined stopping criteria. The stopping criteria could be a predefined number of clusters or when merging does not improve clusterings. Finally, I'll introduce the k-means algorithm. It starts with k initial clusters and begin to assign points of data to them. It improves the accuracy of the clusters according to the predefined factors. Improvement may be reached by combining or splitting clusters and the algorithm stops if the clusters become accurate enough. 
Now, let's look at clustering in social networks.